everyone, I am Renata, and this is board certified urologist, Dr. Barukim. He helps couples trying to get pregnant to couples that want to take a pass on it. What do they need to know when it comes to the male side of things? Historically, if we looked at couples who are dealing with infertility, everybody would always look at the wife and say that the, this is the wife's problem and the woman is the issue. And that is very far from the truth. And so one of the things that we've learned is that if half of couples who are dealing with this issue, there is a male factor component. And so our objective is to break this misconception. The men are also playing a role in this and we need to be looking at it. Do you often see couples together or is it usually just the man who comes to see you and have they already seen fertility specialists by that point? They've usually been seen by the female partner's doctors. Very often the male partner will come in alone. When the male partner does come in with the female partner, you have kind of the sheepish guy who's kind of sitting with his head down and they feel kind of less virile and less macho and it, they don't need to feel like that. This is a medical condition. This has nothing to do with them being a man. Men should be comfortable. You know, we're here, we're here to help. So when it comes to male infertility, what can be the causes? There are a few different things that, that can cause it. In yeah. some people, it could be related to some of the medications that they may take. It could be age related. Certainly people who are using drugs, you know, marijuana, certain other drugs can cause it. Smoking can cause this. There are anatomical issues that can cause it. There's a wide variety of things and it's really, it's our job to figure this out. So how do you go about making a diagnosis? As a patient comes in, usually we'll, we'll do a questionnaire, we'll speak to them very in depth, we'll do a long physical examination on them, and then we'll have them give us a semen analysis, we'll do some blood work, and then some people will do some ultrasounds to kind of take a look. And within that, that then leads us to help make a diagnosis. The more common group are men who have a suboptimal sperm production. So they may either have an imperfect sperm count or the sperm may not be swimming the way they should, or we may not get perfectly normal sperm shapes. Very often, it could be patients who are using anabolic steroids or are using testosterone in the gym. We can find people who are, you know, their diets may be off. It could be the anatomic abnormalities. The most common is something called a varicocele, which is a swelling in the veins that return the blood back from the testicle. It's a very common finding. It's seen in one in eight men. There's nothing unusual. There's nothing abnormal about having it. Mm -hmm. But in the people who do have it, sometimes that can affect their sperm production. The other group that we'll see are in patients who have a zero sperm count, which is obviously a much more severe presentation. In terms of the things that can then lead to that zero count, in some men they're born missing some of the ducts that are needed to carry the sperm out. So what's happening is the sperm is being produced within the testicle, it gets to the loading dock, but there's no truck to carry the shipment. The others can very often be genetic disorders that, that patients will have, which those men will lead completely normal, long, full lives and never understand that they were either missing a gene or they had an additional chromosome or something else that's contributing to that. And then therefore they will then present with a zero sperm count. Unfortunately, in some men who've had either childhood cancers or cancers at a young age, that can also affect their sperm production and we can find certain infections that can lead to a zero sperm count. What we always say to men, if you're coming in and you have a zero sperm count, the deal is not done. We still have many different things that we can do. What kinds of treatments are available for couples who are struggling? So it'll depend on what abnormality we find. Very often if there's a hormonal issue then we can give medications that can support the hormone production. You know the other things that we look at are are there things that we can surgically correct which includes surgery to fix varicoceles. In some men it includes a surgery to go into the testicle itself to try to find sperm production. All right so for folks out there may be concerned about male fertility issues in your experience, how often are couples successful in conceiving after receiving treatment? So in most couples, you know, if I had to give you a ballpark estimate, it's around 50 to 70% we can help with their sperm production. So usually it's going to be those men where we're finding a varicocele that's playing a role, or in men where there's a significant hormonal imbalance that we can manage that can be very clearly corrected. Unfortunately, in the other groups, usually what we're seeing is that it's a very subtle abnormality, and so we're, we're more limited in terms of our toolbox of things that we can do that can help. But there are other treatment options out there that can bypass us treating the male factor. So these are usually done by the female fertility specialist. The primary ones that we think about, number one is intrauterine insemination, which is called IUI. And essentially what happens, the male partner will make a sample, they'll wash that sample, take the best swimmers, and then inject that directly into the female partner's cervix. So 
It's bypassing the first barrier in terms of pregnancy. Depending on the female partner's age and general health, in general, it's around a 20% likelihood of success per attempt, which is actually fairly reasonable. The other thing that we think about are things like in vitro fertilization, which is called IVF. Essentially what's happening in that scenario is the man makes a sample, the woman is stimulated to make extra eggs, and then those eggs are taken out from her body through a, a very simple minor procedure and the sperm is then used to fertilize the egg. The nice thing in that scenario is we don't need the usual millions of sperm. You know, modern medicine has led to many different miracles and it, it's quite exciting. All right, you know your stuff, Doc. Did some work on this. All right, <laughs> boy, certified. <laughs>